I'm the president of Bottom Line Cinema. If history's taught us anything at all about the film business, it's the fact that the most profitable films are not the ones that gross the most money. No, in fact, the most profitable films are the ones that cost the least amount to make. How many times have you heard about movies grossing two and three hundred million dollars worldwide and still not showing a profit? That's because the more money you spend on a film, the more money it costs you. But don't take my word for it. Let's look at this list of all-time most profitable films and you'll see for yourself. Oh, by the way, don't forget, you don't need a Star Wars size budget to make a Star Wars size profit. Mad Max, the budget was under a million dollars and it grossed $99,750,000. He's not mad anymore. American Graffiti cost $777,000 to produce. It grossed over $140 million. That ain't bad. And Rocky won. The budget was $1 million. You know how much they grossed? $225 million. My Big Fat Greek Wedding cost $5 million to produce. It grossed a big fat $368 million. But even more important to you, we've experienced the wave of technology over the last few years that's exploded. So much so that it makes things that we shot just a few short years ago seem old and antiquated. Here, take a look. Originally, the TV business and the movie business were totally separate industries. They each had their own lines of revenue and they each produced their product differently. Movies used bigger crews that took longer and TV used smaller crews that were less expensive. Movies generally took a lot longer to do, up to a year, whereas TV by necessity had to be done much more quickly. Because of these elements, movies cost more money to make. TV was less expensive. To add to the cost, movies were shot on film and television was shot on videotape, making all their technology and equipment totally incompatible with each other. Even the editing was different. Movies were edited by hand, slowly shot by shot, whereas television was edited by magnetic re-recording. But recently, there's been an explosion that's taken place in the industry. For the first time ever, television and movies are now being edited on the same system which linked the two industries together for the first time in history. And what fused the two industries together as one forever is the fact that they now both shoot on digital format. So that brings us right up to today where the film and TV industries are both using the same equipment, the same processes to produce essentially the same product, but they're treating it like business as usual and they're still two separate industries. So while the movie people are spending all kinds of money, this effect would have cost me $10,000 if this were a feature film, the TV people are spending very little money on the same product, but watch this. See that? The film industry is being artificially supported and eventually it's going to crash. I told you. Look at the cameras that we're using today. They're smaller, much more compact. You don't need the size crews that you used to have. But if you want to shoot a feature for a million to a million and a half dollars and really have it sing like a 15 to 30 million dollar movie, you're going to have to do more than just deal with equipment. There are some secrets you have to know about. The first one is never set foot in a studio or on a sound stage or a back lot. We always shoot in practical locations. This is important. If a script calls for an alley, you can either build an alley in a studio environment and spend forty or fifty thousand dollars, or you can find an alley downtown and your alley comes complete with trash cans, dirt. These are things you normally be paying for if you're on a studio. You can save millions of dollars each movie if you shoot in practical locations. It's also very good for the actors. Actors love to be in locations. They feel like they're in the environment. It helps them perform. And the crew likes it too. It's a motivational thing. Practical location is very important. No studio. You know, it used to be that if you had a film that was only marginal, but you had great names in the cast, you could still make money. That's no longer the case today. The new reality is social media travels so fast that bad word mouth gets out of a film almost instantly. And no matter how big the star, they can't save it. Here's some examples. The producers of The Lone Ranger thought Johnny Depp would be a sure bet to bring in an audience, but nobody came to see the film. You know why? It stunk. Not even an A-lister like Johnny Depp could pull that one off. Brian De Palma decided Tom Hanks would secure his bed at the bonfires of the vanities. Tom Hanks, remember, you got a box of chocolates. It tanked. And Brad Pitt himself couldn't save World War Z from turning into a multi-million dollar disaster. Tell Angela you'll be home early for dinner tonight. We don't plan on using any name actors in any of our movies. Los Angeles is a town filled with actors, talented actors, and as American Graffiti proves, you can take an actor that's unknown and make him a bankable star in one movie. 
And that's what we're going to do. We're almost done now with our presentation, but I just want to make sure that I've drawn a perfectly clear picture for you of the advantages of investing in low-budget features. Let's say you're a careful investor. You've done pretty well for yourself in the marketplace, but you're looking for that one low-risk, high-yield return. Most sensible investments pretty much follow the herd. If the marketplace does well, the investment does well. But low-budget feature films have always followed their own path. They're not subject to the ups and downs of the normal marketplace. In fact, traditionally, when the market is in a slump, the film industry is way above the herd. So then, let's say you're in the market for a high-yield, low-risk investment. And you want to realize high profits as fast as you can with a very minimal risk. Not to mention being pretty much impervious to the normal ups and downs of the marketplace. Low-budget feature films are the way to go. And now here's your chance to get in on a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, which is only going to be available for a short time. Right now you can invest not in one, not in two, but in all the movies Bottom Line makes forever. That's right. For a very limited period, you can become an owner in Bottom Line Films. And for your investment of between $100,000 and $100,000, you'll permanently be a member of our company and earn profits from all our films forever. Here's how to do it. 